Euh, merci, merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est un plaisir de m'adresser à ce Conseil de sécurité pour la troisième fois cette année à propos de la situation en, en Ukraine. Et un, un plaisir spécial de le faire, je suis président française. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, and um, I also want to thank the Secretary General for his presence uh, amongst uh, ourselves uh, today. And as he was referring in his um, uh, remarks to the remarkable um, work that uh, the UN uh, gave uh, through its personnel to our uh, important mission by being uh, with them uh, for a few days and, and sharing some very tense uh, moments, I could see the, their heroic de dedication and devotion to the cause of the United Nations. Thank you very much, Secretary General. We will continue, I hope, working together uh, to bring stability to uh, the nuclear facilities in uh, Ukraine. So um, uh, today uh, you may have seen that I issued a um, comprehensive report emanating uh, from uh, the mission I had the honor to lead last week uh, in, in Ukraine and the visit to the Zaporizhia uh, nuclear uh, power plant. Um, this mission uh, has been the result of a painstaking effort of close to six months um, during which strenuous efforts were deployed to try to do just that, to be there with our inspectors to um, address a complete comprehensive um, report of the situation to corroborate some facts that we had been observing for the last six months, but not stop there, um, and to also provide very, very concrete recommendations based upon what we saw uh, at the plant. The first uh, important safety uh, pillar that exists in any nuclear facility is not to uh, violate its physical integrity. And unfortunately, and as I had the opportunity to say also during the briefing that took place on um, August 11th under the Chinese uh, presidency, this has happened, this happened, and this continues uh, to happen. The physical uh, attack wittingly or unwittingly, uh, the hits that this facility has uh, received and that I could personally see and uh, assess together with my experts is simply um, uh, unacceptable. We are playing with fire and something very, very catastrophic could take place. This is why in our report we are proposing the establishing the establishment sorry of a nuclear safety and a security protection zone limited to the perimeter and the plant uh, itself i am uh, going to uh, return to this point later on the second pillar uh, um, that um, is important um, states that all safety and security systems and equipment should operate normally and unhindered and be fully uh, functional uh, we know and we observe that the operators uh, at the plant were operating under uh, extremely challenging uh, circumstances, uh, and together with military equipment and, and uh, vehicles um, in, in different parts of it. Our concrete recommendation in this regard is that the military vehicles and equipment that are currently present in buildings, inside nuclear buildings, on the site, be removed so as not to interfere with normal operation of the nuclear safety and security system. The third pillar states that the operating staff must be able to um, perform their duties without undue pressures or uh, um, difficult circumstances. And of course, this is something that, as you know, has been addressed time and again um, during this um, crisis, and especially since the nuclear power plant was occupied uh, last um, March. So um, we could see, we could work uh, together alongside the experts, and we come, of course, to the conclusion uh, which is in the recommendation 
specific recommendation in my report that the operator should be allowed to return to its clear and routine line of responsibilities and authorities at an appropriate work environment must be re-established, including with proper family support for the staff. Pillar number four is the one that refers to the off-site power supply. I also referred to this in the past, and as you know, this is crucially important in the sense that a nuclear power plant without external power supply may lose crucial functionalities, including the cooling of the reactors and the spent fuel. Without this, we could have a very serious nuclear accident. So regarding this uh, pillar, uh, the IAEA recommends that the off-site power supply line redundancy be re-established and available at any time. For this to be possible, all military activities that may affect the power supply systems must be stopped immediately. The fifth pillar states that there must be uninterrupted logistical supply chains and transportation to and from the sites. You have to imagine that this nuclear power plant, as the Secretary General was rightly reminded, as the biggest in Europe, is a large industrial site requiring a constant flow of spare parts and um, other equipment, um, situation that is, of course, uh, abnormally uh, interrupted now um, in um, face of this uh, conflict. Um, our concrete recommendation in this regard is that all the parties, all the parties should uh, commit and contribute to ensuring effective supply chains. And in this regard, we would like to uh, remind that through the IAEA assistance and support programs that we applied, for example, in Chernobyl, um, a flow of supplies has been um, significantly re-established and a similar mechanism could be um, applied in uh, Zaporizhia. The sixth pillar um, is the one that refers to the functioning of the uh, radiation monitoring system systems to know what is the situation and whether there is radiation in the atmosphere. We do have uh, sets of uh, networks of monitoring equipment that have been affected. Uh, the concrete uh, sixth recommendation in our report indicates that the site should continue ensuring this functionality, including by drills and exercises where which the IEA can help uh, in uh, shoring. And the seventh and final uh, pillar states that there must be continued and reliable communications with the regulator, with the Ukrainian regulator, and with others. We have seen repeatedly that these lines of communication have been uh, interrupted. So the IEA recommends in its seventh recommendation uh, corresponding to each one of the seven pillars of the safety and security that reliable and redundant communication means and channels be secured uh, at all uh, times. Um, dear colleagues, uh, Mr. President, um, the mission that took place um, last week, a historic one indeed, um, has provided uh, us and the international community with a precious instrument in the presence of uh, an IAEA assessment and monitoring mission that could provide uh, us all today with a comprehensive report that provides a neutral, uh, impartial and technical reading of the situation. But moreover, which is uh, also uh, of uh, enormous value, is the fact that um, inspectors of the IEA have remained at the site. So at the moment, the IEA and through it, the United Nations and the international community have the capacity to have a direct, immediate uh, evaluation of the situation uh, on the ground, uh, as uh, may be the case, as it may happen. And um, this fact is uh, unprecedented. In the past, ladies and gentlemen, 
when IAEA inspectors were in places which had um, uh, under uh, went uh, difficult uh, undergone difficult circumstances like Chernobyl or Fukushima or even armed conflict like in Iraq, it has always been after the facts. It has always been to pick up the pieces to meet to remediate what had already happened. We in this case had the historical ethical imperative uh, to prevent something from happening. And by having established this presence and by agreeing to a, a special uh, safety and security protection zone, we will be able, we have the opportunity to prevent this from happening. As it is stated in the report, we are ready to consult quickly uh, with the parties, we believe that this measure, which can be considered an interim measure um, in the hope that other more comprehensive uh, measures uh, of a more effective nature in the context of the conflict, which is not in the remit of the IAEA naturally, uh, could be agreed. But this is something that can be done now. We have the inspectors there already deployed they are doing their work we can agree on a very simple but uh, incredibly necessary protective uh, mechanism to avoid what is happening now as we speak which is the shelling of a nuclear power plant let's seize this opportunity so fundamental for peace for security and to protect the populations of ukraine and beyond I thank you very much, Mr. President.